According to Canon rumors, a Canon Global Shutter may be much cheaper and closer than you may think. So quickly, if you're not familiar with what a global shutter is or does, essentially the way that a camera sensor reads out is from line to line. But what a global shutter does is allows the camera to get the entire image instantaneously, which eliminates the warping or rolling shutter. Now, in the past, they have had global shutters, but it's taken a whole lot of money and usually a whole lot of processing power. So they've been very low megapixels or been in very high-end cinema cameras. That was until Sony released the A9 Mark III earlier this year, beating Canon to the punch. Now, although that was a major accomplishment, there were some sacrifices that had to be made. The base ISO was only 250, and there was some dynamic range issues. And that is the reason that at least Canon executives gave the excuse of saying, we did not want to sacrifice our image quality with our flagship R1 and R5 Mark II. So we did not include a global shutter and they didn't want to include one prematurely. And that truly may be the case because the R1 did have a very high image quality. Now, that being said, it does hint to the fact that Canon is working on a global shutter, and I think pretty much everybody knew that. And earlier this year, we started to get some hints that a global shutter may be coming soon, and people started to speculate on whether or not that would be in the Canon R3. And really, that never made sense to me because the R1 really feels like the successor to an R3. I thought about that a long time ago, thinking that was the R3 really the original R1? I'm not sure if that's true or if that's just a conspiracy that I and others have had, but the fact remains that the R3 and the R1 are very closely specced. And if you are gonna release a Canon R3, even if it's like two years out, you're definitely gonna be stepping on the toes of your quote unquote flagship camera. And I don't really see where they can differentiate themselves and not upset a lot of people. Now, the Sony A1 Mark II was rather lackluster as a flagship upgrade, in my opinion. That being said, they did segment the market out really well by having the A1 have a very high megapixel count and having the A9 Mark III come in much lower. So even though they're similarly priced, people can kind of make the choice for themselves. Do they want the best of the best image quality that Sony has to offer with the A9, or A1 Mark II? Or do they want the faster camera even though it has lower megapixels and some of the compromises that we talked about earlier. But with Canon there really isn't much room between the R3 and the R1. So what is the solution for Canon to be able to put in these global shutters to their cameras sooner rather than later and not have to wait till like the next flagship version of the R1 Mark II to come out? Now according to this Canon Rumors article which even they admit is speculative but it's speculative based upon of the hints that they're getting from some reliable sources. Canon plans on releasing a global shutter camera late 2025 at the earliest. And where it gets very interesting is apparently this has high volume potential camera. So if it's a high volume potential camera, that does not sound like an A9 Mark III that comes in at $6,500. That sounds like a much cheaper camera. So, well, what does it all mean? What does it all mean, Basil? Well, the article thinks that maybe this will come into an APS-C camera first, maybe the R7 Mark II. And even before they got to that conclusion in the article, things started to click in my head like, hey, wait, what if they do it in the A7 Mark II because that way it differentiates itself out from the R1. It doesn't step on anybody's toes with bringing out a R3 really fast and upsetting people. And it also allows them to absolutely dominate in that APS-C market right now with a fast sensor. And if there is a slight degradation in quality to the image, well, it'll be more forgiving in that than it would be a flagship. 
So it's very exciting to think that that's a possibility. Another thing that the article points out is that an APS-C sensor is cheaper to make in general. And if they did have high volume, then maybe they'd be able to bring down the cost even more. That being said, I do think that if they are gonna put in a global shutter into the R7 Mark II, then I suspect a price hike in that camera, but it really has the potential to be like nothing else on the market. And I can see this being a great camera for wildlife shooters in particular who love the APS-C lineup with it being lighter and having the more range out of their lenses. Now that is an issue that Canon Rumors does bring up is that Canon really does not have a great lineup when it comes to APS-C RF lenses. So they would really need to kind of fill that lineup in. And apparently there has been rumors and hints that they are planning on filling out that market sum coming up in 2025, as well as that is a place where they've allowed other companies like Tamron and Sigma to start making lenses for their APS-C lineup, or at least I think they've opened it up to third parties at this point. But of course, take this all with a grain of salt, but I did think that it was very exciting news, and I know a lot of people out there would be very, very happy if an R7 Mark II came out with a global shutter. Drop in the comment section below and let me know if you have thoughts on this. Does it sound like an outlandish idea or does it make sense to you like it did to me? Let me know all of that in the comments below. If you've liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Until next time, peace.